many of the damaging effects can occur during pregnancy, but some can occur prior to it as a result of the sperm exposure. What happens to the fetus carries with it for the rest of that individual's life. That this is a very vulnerable time where organs are developing, lots of things that may not affect us as adults can affect the fetus. We know that DNA can be chemically modified. The DNA that we have is basically the hardware, and how it's modified is the software. It's this epigenetic modification, genes that can be turned on or off. Same DNA, the caterpillar transformed into the butterfly, it is all through this epigenetic programming. A lot of studies uh, in humans about correlations between cell phone use and behaviors and um, behavioral alterations, ADHD, behavioral alterations like that in children of women who are on their cell phones a lot during their pregnancy. We just took regular old cell phones that everyone was using, put them on top of the cage of the mice that were pregnant or had a cell phone that was deactivated on top of the cages of half the mice in separate rooms and just similar to human exposure. Only variable that was different is whether they had that cell phone on or not. So we could really say it was caused by the cell phone. And this is what we found. The first one here looks at memory, and the one with the open circles are those that had the cell phone exposure. Um, and you can see that their memory was decreased. They were much more hyperactive, very, very similar to what we see ADHD. Other studies that have come on since this time that have seen those same sort of correlations in women, especially women who are pregnant, who use cell phones during their pregnancy, and children having various behavioral problems due to that cell phone exposure. Children are more vulnerable to wireless electromagnetic radiation. Myelin, that's the coating around the nerve sheath, and that's a fat-based membrane. And so they're vulnerable to all of this electromagnetic radiation at a rate that's five times higher. A stem cell be can become anything. It has the potential to become a bone cell, or a nerve cell, or a blood cell and in children, their stem cells are found to be more impacted by radio frequency. 30 minutes of just increasing screen time with increased risk of extensive speech delay, memories affected, over 26 studies showing fatigue, headache, nausea, and symptoms of electrohypersensitivity. Cell phones, headaches, and migraines. NIH actually funded a research study on over 50,000 children, and both prenatal and postnatal exposure to cell phones had more migraines and headache-related symptoms. Microwaves produce neuropsychiatric effects, including depression. And so what's the mechanism of this? Our brains, our bodies, our most vulnerable organs are actually our hearts and brains, are powered cellularly by an energy pump within the cell called the mitochondria. And the mitochondria have membranes. And these cells are affected by these radio frequency fields and actually the cellular DNA and the mitochondrial DNA are both affected. And then we have things called voltage-gated calcium channels that if you can imagine a cell membrane, our radio frequency radiation affects these voltage-gated calcium channels. They're channels where you see molecules going through the cell membranes and those are all affected. The neurotransmitters are affected and as Hugh mentioned, hormonally, there's also neuroendocrine cells and those are also affected. The hydro hydrogen bonds in the helical DNA are affected by radio frequency radiation. Having a brain tumor, whether benign or malignant, is a life-changing event. It's really better to go through life without contracting a brain tumor. The overall cancer rates are rising profoundly in millennials. So they were 20s to 30s and now they're approaching 40s, but now we have thyroid and rectal cancers and brain tumors, not to mention suicide, depression, and stroke, all increasing in this population. And as Hugh mentioned, yes, things are multifactorial. Is it solely the effect of our cell phones? No, not necessarily. We have toxins in our environment. But the fact is, is that we have never had more electromagnetic frequency in our globe up until now. Over time, cumulative damage occurs. And the issue, of course, is, is that long term, all of these things are cumulative. And so we can't possibly anticipate what's happening 
as a cumulative dose over a lifetime. As early as in the 1990s, and these are all little reference studies that refer to an article, but as, the, as early as the 1990s, they found effects of radiofrequency that involve brain cancer, heart, oxidative changes, reproductive changes, sleep changes, at levels of radiofrequency exposure that were all below the recommended FCC and Canadian limits. When the brains are exposed to cell phone radiation, they are not oxygenating well. Wireless radiation is in fact a neurotoxin. It's toxic to cells. Loss of memory, oxidative stress I already mentioned, demyelination. Demyelination is what happens when the lining of the nerve cells in the spinal cord and even in the brain deteriorate. It's the common occurrence that happens with multiple sclerosis. India has actually banned cell towers in higher populated areas. France, Belgium, and Israel have banned the phones in school, and many schools in Israel are actually wired, meaning Ethernet, the cable that you see on the bottom right. Cabling a company, a school, a library, is actually cheaper, more effective, and higher bandwidth than having recurring costs of Wi-Fi routers that are going to deteriorate over time. This is a study of how radio frequency radiation can damage trees. Now trees have the advantage, like the zebrafish and the mouse and the rat, that they don't listen to the news and they can't be biased by reports. And so you look at this study and you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see clear evidence that the side of the tree closest to the tower there is dying. These studies that I'm showing you here have done, had modeled how much more radiation exposure there would be if 5G existed at the current permitted levels. Antennas are found much closer to ground than they're supposed to be. They're put on things that look like street lamps, but they're not. Studies have shown that there's reduced motor activity in, in worker bees. There's something called a piping signal that they do in order to tell one another to get to work and what they're supposed to do. And the worker bees and the bees that are supposed to be the defender bees, all of them show problematic behavior with exposure to this radiation. Ultimately, the queens stop doing their job, which is to make lots and lots of eggs, to make more bees, to make more honey. And there have been a number of studies showing this. Government limits are 26 years old. The current standards for every one of the world's 8 billion phones and many more devices are 26 years old. And the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals was so appalled by that that when our organization sued and asked for an update of the standards, the court ruled that we had established the failure of the FCC to provide a record of reasoned decision making. The court also held that there was a failure to consider any of the evidence on environmental effects. It was found that uh, the FCC's decision to keep, to not to update, not to change those 1996 limits was arbitrary and capricious and that the FCC had ignored uh, issues of long-term exposure and science showing impacts to the developing brain and reproductive organs. And the court also said that the FCC had completely ignored the issue of impacts to wildlife. The bottom line is that FCC limits cannot be thought of as resting on an up-to-date scientific review. The EPA, the CDC, the National Cancer Institute, the FDA, and the Department of Labor have not looked at all of the science. And that's the bottom line. There was no pre-market safety testing for long-term exposure. There's no post-market surveillance for health effects. There's no monitoring of the radio frequency levels that we're exposed to every day. You're seeing in my community, this is an apartment building with a cell tower popped on 27 feet from the homes right near bedroom windows. In other countries, there's monitoring for what radio frequency levels we're exposed to. We measure air pollution here. We measure uh, contaminants in water. 
but we're not measuring the, the radio frequency level exposures. And they are, allow even higher levels of exposure to workers. And our workers are surrounded every day by uh, microwave radiation. There's been no review of impacts to wildlife. In fact, our FCC limits were not even designed to consider impacts to uh, birds, bees, or trees. There's no environmental assessment that has been done on the 5G rollout. Despite the fact that the FCC is proposing nearly a million new wireless uh, facilities in the United States alone, and there'll be billions of new wireless devices, and research hasn't been done by the FDA on impacts from millimeter waves, which are going to be used in new 5G networks. The FDA does not regulate cell towers or cell tower radiation. Therefore, the FDA has no studies or information on cell towers to provide in response to your questions. There is no agency, none, no, not the EPA, not the FDA, no agency with health and science expertise looking at the science to ensure those ambient environmental emissions are safe for us. The Environmental Protection Agency, they were tasked with and working on the development of lim limits, and they were abruptly uh, defunded just as the Telecom Act was passed and when there was some of the most heavily, uh, heavy lobbying that had ever been done in the country actually on any one bill. Uh, in the 1995 and 1996. Many governments, France, United Kingdom, Spain, Austria, Switzerland, and so forth, they measure radio frequency radiation. They have public websites where you can go online, pick your location, and see what the radio frequency levels are. You can even, if you live in France, you go to your mayor and you say, I'd like to know what the radiation is right outside my door, and actually, they put in a request, measurements are done, and you're given that information. There's also many bans and restrictions on uh, Wi-Fi in schools, uh, bans in kindergarten and nursery schools, Belgium, as well as uh, many. The question becomes, is artificial electromagnetic fields an environment that's gonna potentially unravel the advances that we have made that we have made as human beings, as an evolutionary species. That's really what we're facing here.